Hello, this video is going to give you a little bit more information for Monday's lab. We're going to do virtual chemistry lab 3-4, which is the Diels Alder 1 experiment. So I'm going to start by opening up my Beyond Lab software. Oh, and I'm going to minimize my screen. There we go. And on this, I'm going to start by opening up the worksheet. So in the dyeing section, I'm going to go to Deals Alder 1. And for those sections, remember, those are all listed in the syllabus. So if you are unsure of what section to go to. So in the Deals Alder 1, we're given the product right here cyclohex 3 ing carboxylic acid methyl ester um, that's definitely going into some nomenclature that we don't know it's definitely a mouthful so if we have products like that kind of the quick and easy way to figure out what that's really talking about is to, to scroll down and there's a picture of it right here so we're given this the structure and the name of our intended product right away uh, we know um, from what we've talked about, that the instructions that are given in here are pretty generic, but we are told in that first step that we're going to use ether as a solvent. So I'm going to go and write my product. So my cyclohexene with a methyl ester attached, and I'm going to have ether here as my solvent. So we need to figure out what our starting materials are based off of a couple things. We're going to base it off of what's available in our lab room. And we're going to base it off of the fact that this is a Diels Alder reaction. So I'm opening up my software here. I'm going to go into that dyeing section again and then the 3-4 reaction. And then while I'm doing this, I'm also going to go open up the lab room or excuse me the lab assignment on canvas and on canvas in the notes section it says once in the lab room you need to click on deals alder on the chalkboard to get the right chemicals um, for some reason there's a bit of an error in the software just with this experiment and it opens it up to the epoxidation section so i'm going to click on deals alder and there on the chalkboard, we can see all of the possible structures to make our product. And let's see if I can do a little split screen here. There we go. That might work. Oh, those are awfully tiny, though. I don't think that's going to work. Let's try it this way again. Okay, so we know we need to make our cyclohexane with double bond in it, which is essentially the basics of all of our Diels Alder, and we need a methyl ester. Um, so I definitely see some things that are not going to work. Pretty much all of those chemicals in the middle are not going to work. They either have the wrong functional groups or too many functional groups. I know that that cyclopentadiene is not going to work because if we do a Diels Alder with a ring, we will create a bridged ring system. So it looks like the one at the very top up there, that 1,3-butadiene, and the one at the very bottom, the so it's called methyl acrylate, are going to be our best two options. So I'm going to go back to my little whiteboard and write those out. So this is 1,3-butadiene, and this is methyl acrylate. And we don't need any extra reagents. Those are the only two reagents we need. So we're going to combine those together, add in the ether, and then go through the rest of the steps. Uh, one of the things I learned with troubleshooting with one of your classmates last week is that the solvent needs to be added in after the starting materials. So these are the starting materials, and we're going to add those in first. The solvent gets added in second, 
And then we don't have any extra reagents, but for experiments where we do, we add in the reagents third. Um, for some reason, with the last lab, if you did the starting material and the solvent in the opposite order, it would explode your flask. So uh, we figured that out with a little troubleshooting. All right, so we know our starting materials, we know our solvent, we know what product we're going to make. I'm gonna go back to Canvas just to see if there's anything else. And then the only other thing, it says that the only the product is going to be visible on the TLC plate. So as you're doing the reaction, you do want to check it by TLC plate. And what you're going to expect is that in the first column on the TLC plate, so let me draw a little TLC plate here. There's my TLC plate. There's going to be two little dashes. That first column is going to stay empty the entire time. Because that first column on our TLC plate is representing the starting material. The second column is representing the reaction at whatever time you took the TLC plate. So what you'll see if you take it early is you'll just see a little spot. And then if you take it again, you'll see a bigger spot. And if you do it again, you'll see a bigger spot. So you can monitor the reaction that way by seeing an increase in that spot. You do need to figure out that RF value from that data. Um, so take a TLC plate, save it to your lab notebook so that you can do some measuring. And then let me go back to Canvas. I think that's all we have on here. There's our information for our lab report. And then we have three questions there. And some of them do have some structures or structures that you need to fill in. Um, you don't need to redraw the whole reaction you can just fill in the actual structures. But I think that is it for this experiment. So that should be enough to get you going on Monday. Again, I will be available through text and email. Um, so you can always contact me if you have some questions. I'll have my tablet with me so I can look stuff up that way too. All right, thank you.